Excited? Very excited. What are, we, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to get a tour of Donnie Thompson's, I think it's the shed gym. It looks like a shed, but inside it's loaded with a million goodies. And here's the man, the myth, the legend. All right, what is up, guys? Coach Joe here. Uh, where are we in South Is it South, South Columbia, Carolina? Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, South mm -hmm. Carolina, with the man, the myth, the legend, Donnie Thompson. Now, if I were to have like a resume of Donnie Thompson, it'd be pretty dang long. So I'm just going to say he's a world time record holder of a lot of world time records. Uh, he's totaled 3,000 pounds. He's created a lot of really cool strength equipment, mobility equipment, rehab equipment. I, I don't know how you'd even classify it. A little bit of both. A little yeah. bit of everything. He's got a really cool ass bulldog, and you guys know I'm a fan of dogs. I wish he could meet. Well, my, my whole dog. line is fat. You know, the premise of all my line is fat. Fat. So I have to have a fat bulldog, too. It only makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what's the name? Lulu. Lulu. Yep. Lulu is a beast. So, <laughs> we're going to get a grand tour of this shed gym. Is it called the shed? Yeah, the storage shed. The storage shed. Just keep it simple. But uh, mm -hmm. just to kind of piggyback on the story, is eventually I want to get my own shed gym for uh, my house. Uh, I have the lion's den, but I think it's important to kind of have your own little man cave to train in. And when I came in here, I was just stunned. Like, there's history, there's culture, it, there's a mat that says the last real gym. Uh, so I think this whole place is super badass. So why don't you give us a tour? I want to see everything. And there's stuff I've never even seen before in here. He has something called, uh, what is it? The, the Leg Legosaurus. Legosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is it? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. So All right, let's, let's go. go, Donnie. Come, Come on. on. So all this equipment ranges from like 30 to 40 years old all the way on up to recent stuff. And wow. a lot of stuff I had made like the circle of strength, you know? Okay. I came up with that watching Gunsmoke and I saw a Medicare commercial. I'm like, that's a circle of strength when they put a bar graph up there and we had it made. And it was, uh, it took about a, two years to get it done and, and um, a lot of circles on the ground with chalk. And uh, we had it done and now it's one of the most used spaces in the gym. So um, how much of this stuff is like custom? Like you can't get it. Is there a lot of that stuff in here or can you get most of this stuff? You can, I think you can get most of this stuff. It might not be the same, yeah. the, like uh, the same kind of equipment it was made, but they still, everything's made now brand new that mimics, you know, the, a lot of the old stuff and some of it's even better than the old stuff. All right, so, now I want to see this, this circle of strength here because you yeah. made these things, right? These are the Thompson these, Fat Bells? Yeah, Bells. these are made by Rogue. They're Thompson Fat Bells, the original. And uh, they, they go from nine pounds to 150 and there's 15 sets of them. And so also in this circle, I have a couple triads over there that are 35s and 55s. And then I have my old RKC kettlebells from the 2003. So we do a lot of, in powerlifting, we did a lot of kettlebell swings, a lot of kettlebell snatches, front squats, cleans. And so now we can have the kettlebells and the fat bells to do all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I like that Some work better than the others, and we, did, you know, we have an option now. To get just the feel of it, you know, let's like take these 44s, for example. And so you can, you can get as strict on these as you want, or as, but, but your, your hand's in the center of the sphere. Okay. So your hand is like the weight now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I'm going to so find when, out. When I've you, really never used these. When you want to go, like if I, I just, I can curl just like here, you know, and I get a lot of bicep uh, activity instead of a lot of the joint pain. Okay. You know what I mean? Like the, there's no, I don't have to move out of their way and I have freedom to rotate these things pretty easily. You know what else too you know? I'm thinking is like putting them down. I feel like my fingers aren't going to get destroyed. Never. That's a, <laughs> like like from, from a practicality never, standpoint, like who's never smashed a we finger? We never sell that, but that's right. You will never get your yeah, finger yeah. caught in a rack again. That's a big thing, never. man. Like how many people are you guys watching know you crushed a finger with a dumbbell? And the biggest like, right away, that ain't happening. It's the perfect geometrical figure. And why not implement it in the training? Like you're saying, right? You do swing. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You see, you get a lot more effort. With yeah. your effort, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck. Yeah. Where the handle on a kettlebell is extended, and you get that dead spot with the kettlebell where it's really no effort. I was saying, because the, the, it just feels differently. Like you said, it's all around my hand versus your hand the kettlebell is, is going to be out in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can actually. Yeah, I was playing. Is yeah. this how you're working here? Yeah, you just roll it up and roll it. It kind of needs a little bit of sticky spray. The, yeah, the, but this is cool. It's pretty slippery. Like, then I've you, never seen a, a grip machine. And then that, you could go on the side and. You know, and do external rotation like this. Oh. Okay. And then turn another revolution and internal rotation with the same elbow. So it's, it's pretty neat. It was, uh, you saw these about 30 years ago in a lot of the health house and stuff. Sidebacks used to make them and I got the rotator cuff one too. Hard to find, but uh, 
a friend of mine, Big Hess, found them for me. I feel um, like now they're, it's kind of coming back, too. Yeah. Like, all this grip training yeah. stuff. Like, all the, you would see this. Like, when I was growing up, I probably wouldn't have even touch this. But we now, a, it's like... We do a hashtag called what is old is new again. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you're seeing a lot yeah. of. You know, kind of like in Hollywood does the shows, and they remake them. But it's the same thing in the equipment industry. Yeah. Now, let's go. Let's see the Legosaurus. The Legosaurus. I bought 1996. Look at this freaking thing. Yeah. How tall? This is like 12 feet. You have to climb up it to get to get in there. And the nice thing about it, it's a leg press, but it works on a, a you know, leverage on a pendulum. Yeah. And there's no guttural pressure like when you're in a leg, regular leg okay. press. Okay. So when you do this, and your your knees will come way past parallel. Yeah, yeah. And there's it doesn't hurt your ribs or your belly. Nothing. It's just it's just all lower body. How many of these things them, exist in history? 400. They made 400. Okay. This is like one, 179. This is number 179. That's cool. Yeah. This is so. something like, yeah, if you see this like on like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, you would have no idea what the heck this is. They've gained popularity lately and everybody wants them. So, really? Yeah. They're, they're probably, so they're probably like expensive, you think, now, right? I think uh, some, some they used to give them away because they didn't want them in the gyms. And now people are starting to collect. I can see this being like an antique. Value's going yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. This, this going has got to be going up. I'm going up. This will, give you more than a, this will give you a completely full squat, like way below parallel. Now, when you're ready to go, shove into those pads. Don't shove with your feet so much as you do shove your body into those pads, and the platform will move. Whoa. See the difference? This is crazy. Yeah. What in the world? So watch the camera. will pick up your depth on this. <laughs> Look at that. Do it again. Yeah. Oh. What? So let's talk about uh, some of your best purchases so like I would say with everything going on right now a lot of people are getting these garage gyms or home gyms mm -hmm. so out of everything in here what would be like some of the top purchases you've ever made or you you have here that uh, anyone watching could maybe add to their uh, collection arsenal maybe something a little bit different obviously we you know we need a rack a bench barbells and stuff like that but what would you add on top of that stuff yeah like when you mentioned benches racks and all that stuff uh, a lot of times we just take what we can get and yeah. then we modify them we get yep. a welder buddy and modify them so that's not too hard to do uh -huh. But uh, when you get to the dynamics of your training, everybody has their own thing they do, right? But I think the the most incredible thing to have is the different bars to use. Okay. You know, yeah. I have a arsenal of bars for pressing yeah. and squats and pulls, you know, so there's, uh, there's so many available right now and, and they uh, are made better than they've ever been made. So you can go from your very fancy Olympic bar to your fat bars and your squat bars and mm -hmm. stuff and so i think that's uh they even have a couple different type of deadlift bars now so you know i think the the bars really help your because they're like someone who's been lifting many many decades right they're not going to get under a straight bar and squat anymore yeah but now they have options where they uh -huh. can still squat but they're not killing their shoulders with the straight bar and a lot of people go oh, why don't you work on your shoulder mobility well, uh, there isn't any when yeah, you're in your yeah, 50s yeah. and you've been training since you It doesn't since really matter 13. as much anymore no, either. No, yeah. You're not in any sports. What's so. your favorite bar to use, you would say, or the most used bar that you use personally? I think the, the fat bar okay. I, for benching and stuff, yeah, yeah. I think I use that the most the over most? the years. And the, uh, the, buffalo, the buffalo bar for squats. It's a slightly curved bar. Yeah. And I think those were the two I think I use the most. Yeah, what is this? So this, this was is, made this by a bodybuilder in the 80s named Jim Deziak from he Illinois. Yeah, he, you could get you know, three guys on here and they could wrap their knees and you put it behind a power rack and then you can wrap your knees for squats. You know, and the three guys can wrap while one goes, the other's wrap, and then the other's wrap. And so they called it the squat arena. This is cool. Yeah, there's only one you other. You have a lot like of it. circles in here and like half circle things. You know, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Hexagons, everything. I got this from Louis Simmons personally okay. back in 2000. And I paid, I think like twenty six hundred dollars or twenty nine hundred dollars for it that back then. That doesn't happen anymore. Nope, and it's uh, <laughs> one of a kind. There's only I think it only had three made at the time, and wow. so that's why it says Westside Barbell. That's their sticker, not mine. I didn't put it on there. All the rest are. When I get stickers from somebody, I throw them on here. Yeah. Or when I travel, I like I have the Finland felt flag on there. So I got a, you know, I, it's it's a really cool thing to. It's never going anywhere, uh -huh. you know, and other than some jack maintenance. It's us all there is to it. So when you can use it to squat regular out of, or you can use the yeah. the um, J hooks to pull away, so you don't have to walk the squat out. And you know, as older lifters, we don't really like walking the squats out anymore. But yeah. you know, we can do either one. I see you also have some gold plates. Yeah, these are, are old York. Twenty-four karat or what? They, I think they're like getting close in price to that now. I was gonna say, right? Like yeah. they, you cannot get these anywhere. No, right? they're 
what's what's made is made. These were made, forged, and everything. These are 45 ke- uh, York, kgs each. York, Pe- York, Pennsylvania. Wow, from, so, from the homeland, guys. You know, Not far. Gold. That's- we call them gold hundos, and there's these and the black ones, and they're both very hard to get now. Yeah. So York, I think in the mid 90s they were priced a dollar 19 a pound on most of their things, but I think t- now you're looking at 250. Two dollars and fifty cents a pound minimal, yeah. and I mean that's a good deal, you know. Oh, so, yeah. like we were saying earlier, what is old is new again. Yeah, it's you crazy. Know? It's you just know? cool when you can kind of find these things. People don't understand the value of them. Um, all right, so then we have a lot of these these big pads here. Okay, there's some my fat pad I came up the, with. This is the fat pad. So, uh, guys, if you're watching this video, this is the creator of the fat pad, which yeah. is like this is crazy for me because I'm I'm with him in person, mm-hmm. and I see these in gyms all around the freaking country all the time. What prompted you to make this? Like, was there a process with it? Uh, you know, I'm just in- well, intrigued someone, by the background. One of my buddies tore his AC joint, his shoulder, bench pressing, and he was a physical therapist. His name is Mike Johnson. And Mike and I worked together at a physical therapy place. And uh, Dr. Lee, the orthopedic surgeon, came in. And he's, he's, I said, uh, how, how long has he got till he's better? And he goes, oh, probably about five or six months. And I'm like, where well, he can go full steam again, right? Because he just had surgery. And I'm like, well, what can help prevent this? He goes, and we had a competition bench in the clinic. And he said, get rid of that pad. That's well suited for women and children. But for you guys, you guys are wider. He said, there's glenohumeral overhang, which I didn't know at the time what he even was talking about. But he goes, under load, what do you think is going to happen to your muscles in your shoulders? You know, packs, rotator cuffs, and everything else. I'm like, huh. He said, I said, what's the answer? He goes, make a pad that's wider and a, and a pad that's thicker. Mm-hmm. A pad that's thicker to allow slight scapular movement. He goes, you don't need to see them move, but they have to have slight movement. And then the wider pad for positioning. And I was like, good. And we had a power to meet in Charleston and it was at, at Charleston Southern and 103 lifters. So I measured everybody's shoulders, retracted, female and male. And we found the right measurements. And uh, so I, we made four pads and this is the one that won out. That's cool. I, I always just love the history behind stuff because obviously you see this, you think, okay, bigger guys should use this, but there's there's reason why, right? Like he had a doctor you know, or a surgeon like ex- explain why this needs to be such a valuable piece of well, equipment. Fred Hatfield, an old yeah. powerlifter, he he. We were talking. We had supper together in 2012. And we were talking about the uh, bench press battle I came to be, and they with AAU originally in the powerlifting body pulled a um, bench out of the Y MCA. And they measured it, and that was the. And he said back then they put as many cuts of a piece of plywood as they can get on a bench. Hmm. So they were never tested and never designed for lifters. Yeah. So this is the first one done for that. That's cool. Now there's tons of stuff in here. A lot. I you know I see like leg presses. We got hack squats. We got different machines. Uh, I'm always intrigued to ask the question of what do you think is a piece of equipment that people buy too much of that is just unnecessary? Was there any purchases that you've had that like you don't use that you could kind of just cut out? I mean, obviously in here, I think everything here gets used, but just from history, there's something you're like, I don't really see the there is, There is at times of your career. Okay. So when you're, when you're very young, like a young athlete in your 20s and stuff, big, strong guy, um, like leg extensions, leg curls and stuff for, for athletes who just, who just don't yeah. use them, you yeah. know, it's like a waste of any pec decks and stuff like that. Then as you get a little older, I think we'll bring them back, uh-huh. you know, and they actually work really well once you get through your career. And yeah. uh, so some of these things might be a waste at the moment of your life uh-huh. that you're like commit, uh, doing strongman competitions, yep. right? Yeah. And so you're, it might be a waste now, mm-hmm. but later on in life, it'll be a, a good friend. So yeah. my, my thing is, is watch a piece of equipment. If it gets no play for six months, then get rid of it. Okay. But if it's, if it's getting some play through that six months time, keep it because it'll bit and also reposition it in your gym where it'll get more traffic. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have any corners that are dead in, in the gym here. Yeah. Everything here gets used. Yeah, everything has a purpose. And, and especially when you have a gym like this, mm-hmm. you know, uh, floor space is going to be huge, right? Like when yeah. you, you look at it, like how much does something take up? You got to be very methodical. And I can tell that this is laid out in a very methodical way. I see all these big pieces. And at first I thought it was light, right? And I'm like, oh, I'll just go move this. And then, oh, oh, that, that's heavy. So what exactly is this? And, uh, what, what are you going to do to me later with these things? These are body tempering rollers. Some of them are uh, made by, um, they're cast and, and molded perfectly for what we need to do. And some are just pieces of steel we got at the scrapyard. And we had them turned down in a lathe at a machine shop. 
some of these cost like five hundred and fifty dollars, five seventy-five, and some we got given to us for free because they didn't want the steel around. So you get lucky, you know. And we've tried various things like putting two fat bells together. Chimemics, when we first started, we would take kettlebells together and roll people out. So it works really well. Uh -huh. And um, so we, we, anything we can do to body tempering uh, that's round and we can use, we'll put, we'll input in. So. I'm missing a lot because I gave a lot away for people to use, but they never end up coming back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just got to write them off. It's like a book, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, oh, I'll, like get that, I'll get that book back. Never, never happens. Never a roller. Yeah, never, never a roller. Ne never. <laughs> what is this thing? It's not for holding water bottles, right? No, yeah. This is a old reverse hyper. So I got it in 94, 1993, 94 from Louis Simmons. And this is the old kind you have to hammer it into the floor. And so when I was up there at like 98 or 99 at Westside, um, I saw Chuck Vogelpool get on one. Louis had like three, and they all had different arms on here, and they cut one of the arms off and put chain on. And I was like, that's the only one that I saw Vogelpool using. And so I was like, man, if he's using that and no one else is, it must be hard. So I decided to do it when I got home. And so this has been the only way I've ever used the reverse hyper is with this chain. And it works so much better being unstable like that. And I, I really get a lot more out of it. So this has been a mainstay in training for many years. But good QL builder. When people are coming to loot you for antique gym equipment, this is going to be a high, high valued item, my friend. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> a lot of people asked to borrow it when I was in storage or when I was moving gym. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good <laughs> on the borrowing. Baby. Yeah, we're not letting we're not oh. letting the reverse hyper away. We're the old Perillo leg press over here. See that thing? That thing's a relic right there. Oh my gosh! I got that. Uh, my Rob Hassan got it for me in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, of all places. It was the only trifold one we could find, like the old one I used to have, and they're rare. This trifold's rare. And Tom Onderman made this for Perillo back in the day, and it has these rollers with cast with uh, bearings in them. So instead of the guide rods, works so good. Oh my gosh, this thing's awesome. This is, this is such a cool place. I mean, you can just tell like you eat, sleep, and breathe this in here. There's culture, right? It's the, the proper atmosphere. I got to go through and look at all these pictures all over the wall, which you guys are seeing uh, on the video. There, there's banners, there's boards. I mean, this is the real deal, man. So uh, honestly, one, thank you for having me. Two, I'm um, just grateful to be here and just absorb all of this. And, and here, you know, you're a wise guy. You've been around for some time. so. Uh, thank you so much. But as always, plug yourself, man. Where can everybody find you? Your products, everything, man. Oh, bodytempering.com. Okay. That's it. That's it. Everything's on there. Uh, you can navigate that website and you'll find everywhere. And there's yeah. nothing. I don't sell anything on there, but you can go to the links where you can buy the okay. buy my products and, and various other things. Are you on so. Instagram? Yeah, Thompson okay. Bowtie. You got a YouTube channel? Yeah, but uh, I'm not as active as you are. Oh, well, <laughs> but I, I post stuff on it, but I'm not yeah, real yeah, popular. Yeah, so absolutely. Yes, yeah, YouTube channel. Very so. cool. So thank you mm -hmm. so much, guys. Make sure you guys are subscribed, like the video, heading over to Donnie's stuff, and you're subscribing to him as well as looking at the stuff to purchase. Uh, we're going to continue on with our day filled with fun events, uh, and I may wear a football helmet at some point. So we'll see. Guys, stay a lean, mean, strike machine. Peace.